Hello everyone and welcome to Collider Nightmares. My name is Clark Wolf. It's so nice to see you all and thanks for joining us. We have a huge show today. Uh, I think we should dive right in, but first let's go ahead and introduce our panel. To my left we have Miss Perry Nemiroff. Hi guys. I'm so freaking happy to be here, not just because of the sidebar, but for another reason that you're going to find out about in like 30 seconds. Woohoo! And to her left is Mr. John Schnepp. I'm going to find out with you why she is so excited because I'm not excited, but I am excited to be here, but just not excited in general. <laughs> you you already know the surprise, Schnepp. I can tell you that right now. Oh, you are okay. not going to be excited because right. you already know it. <laughs> but we are all excited because we have a very special guest today, Mr. Uh, James Oster, a.k.a. Jimmy O from JoeBlow.com hey. and oh, HeroInTheHead.com. No. Jimmy to the O in the yeah. head. Hi, sir. It's been a while. I like, know. This is my first time. I'm, 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 you're cracking. You're popping my cherry. Is Good. that what the firm that, that is what they is? say. That's what, they what they the say? kids say. Actually, wow. I was on AMC for your consideration for the very first time with this man right yes. here. We I, shared you're rocking the cowboy we, hat. I had the cowboy hat, which doesn't we, fit me anymore at all because I've lost so much weight. Well, maybe I can <laughs> use the cowboy hat. You there can you use go. it. I, I did like that to you on my very first set visit ever. Really? What was yeah. it? It was um, Immortals. Wow. Oh, my God. Blast so from the past. Ago. And I met Jimmy O way back in the AMC closet days mm -hmm. yeah. when he was a guest on AMC Movie Talk, and I was a host on AMC Movie Talk. So it's all in the family today. And uh, Jimmy O, you have uh, a movie that is completed that I know you wanted to tell our horror-loving audience yeah. about. Yeah, it makes me really excited. We have a film that we just finished called The Harvesters, which is a little nice little cool Oklahoma based horror film that takes place all on Halloween, very Carpenter esque. Mm -hmm. We had a LA screening a few weeks mm -hmm. back and it went really well. And I'm jumping on to my next project, which is Sick for Toys. So awesome. we're, uh, I'm. I'm going to horrify audiences, Yay. hopefully in a good way. Good. That's what we like to hear. Well, hopefully when they come out and uh, when they get their releases, you can yeah. come back and we'll have you back on. Let's do it. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I might change my mind. Just yes. kidding. Uh, <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, dive right into our fresh meat. Fresh meat. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's fresh. eyeballs now. Did it always oh, have eyeballs? Cute. always had eyeballs. I just noticed the eyeballs for the first I just <laughs> saw them. <laughs> Is it weird that I found that? Cute. I like the cute. Yeah. I like the little eyeballs. The adorable the yeah, eyeballs it's... and uh, and and meat processing. It came from the cow in last week's clip. Oh, Damn, indeed. Right. Oh, yes. that just got a little real. By the way, Ooh. before we get into that, do you watch Dies of My Mother? I did. What'd you think? Mm. Yeah, okay. It was better than Evolution. I watched two movies that were like kind of a little bit slow and abstract and surreal. Uh -huh. I thought uh -huh. Eyes of uh, Eyes of My Mother was. It was an interesting spin uh -huh. on a, a horror uh, story that we've seen a mm -hmm. lot of times. Uh, I just found it to be a little bit too um, precious. Uh, precious is a word, but mm -hmm. uh, it I would is a say, word. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say boring, yeah. but uh, a stilted. Mm -hmm. I found that it just moved along in such a way that, and also it felt like it was, it just didn't, it never got to the moments that I was hoping it would get to. Instead, yeah. it seemed to cut away from those and show you the boring parts. See, I actually like that because I felt it was such a slow burn and it made me really uncomfortable, made me really hate that woman, which is, is weird because she's kind of a victim. You feel bad for her, but there's something, it was very, I that win, third act I, killed me. I wanted to feel that way instead. Really? I just felt like, when does this movie end? Interesting. Wow. Well, I'm I'm sort of in the middle. I, I really liked the movie, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I really liked that character too. Meaning, I did. It's interesting. I, yeah. I, she's character. just a really interesting character study, which I, I, and so maybe that's why I was more, I wasn't bored by it. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, the character itself was interesting, but it just, the what ended up happening in the film was just, you know, it felt like flat to me. That's all. Well, I, I wish we could have a spoilers mm. discussion about this. We're not going to yeah, do it. We gingerly right now. stepped around it yeah, without exactly. spoiling it for you. Because Ooh, I, so good. yeah, well, anyway, you'll have to watch it. Decide for yourself. Eyes of My Mother, it's out now. Okay, let's move <laughs> on to our real story. Uh, first up, Universal's The Mummy unleashed a long awaited poster and full length trailer last week, showcasing an impress impressive action sequence in a plane and showing what appears to be Tom Cruise's character dying in a crash, sitting back up in the morgue. The Mummy also teased Russell's, Russell Crowe's Dr. Henry Jekyll, who appears to have a pretty large role in the film, or at least uh, he's he's sort of in charge of the rules of this um, particular cinematic universe. Mm. So, um, and and to our viewers out there uh, who who said that they saw bats uh, in the like crashing into the plane and taking that down, obviously assuming that maybe that was Dracula. Um, we we here at Carter Nightmares did some very intense analysis. 
analysis. Very intense. <laughs> and we, yeah. have, we have discovered <laughs> that they are birds, not bats. Yep. So this is very Sully-esque of them, apparently. Blackbirds. Um, right. Yeah, blackbirds. Black Although you said you thought well, you saw a white bird. The, so, like, our research was essentially, like, space bar, space bar, space bar, yes. over and over. But the, the birds, I think the birds were definitely black because in the shot after yeah. where you see the feathers falling all, all over the pilot, it's black feathers. The oh, birds okay. were definitely black. But, I thought maybe um, it was just a shadow because the one in the back looked like it was So black, maybe but. Eric Draven is going to be part of the That's shared I, universe. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We're, they're, they're, the crow is having so much trouble. Right. That yeah. Universal like, Monitor come is on like, over here. right up, come yeah. on yeah, we'll here. Yeah, we'll take you. Um, and it, we also also should note that Universal released a two and a half minute behind the scenes look at the making of The Mummy, uh, heavily featuring Tom Cruise and Alex Kurtzman. But for me, the biggest takeaway from that part was the extensive practical effects and yes. stunts mm -hmm. that you see. Absolutely. Um, so, Jimmy O, I want to start with you because you were actually at the trailer launch. I was there. I'm so jealous because none of us got to go. Darn you, Frosty, <laughs> taking and all the cool stuff. Uh, but tell us about the experience and what were some of your reactions to what you've seen from The Mummy? Well, you know, I know that I knew when I saw the th trailer, I knew there would be a lot of people not excited about it because it does kind of have the, it's Tom Cruise in a big action movie, you know, that kind of Mission Impossible meets The Mummy type of thing. But with that said, it, it is, we, I, I think we we coined a phrase at this, uh, this event, uh, I, I forgot what it was, like, trailer teaser or something like that because mm -hmm. it really is a little bit of both yeah and what i what got me more excited about it i like the trailer sequence i like the the plane sequence is amazing but i liked what alex had to say i feel like he he's really trying to do something that's unique to universal monster movies still make it a monster film i mean he kind of discussed how he feels about monster movies in general mm -hmm. as not really being horror movies but being you know, the, the, the beauty of a monster movie, you can take this awful creature and you can make him sympathetic. Mm -hmm. You can make him likable. And a lot of the best monster movies do have that. So I'm thinking we're going to see that here. And especially with Sophia playing the mummy, I think there's going to be an interesting idea behind that. But yes, the practical is also where it got me. And we they showed us the making of, mm -hmm. and they showed us another little thing that they didn't air to the public, which I'm not going to give away too much. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we've got something special here. And I think that definitely not bats, <laughs> definitely not bats, but I, I, I'm really hoping, I think I'm feeling more optimistic about it. Yeah. I get the concerns because I do feel like, oh, well, are we going to have a horror movie? It's universal horror. It's universal monsters. And that's, but I don't know if we can't necessarily go back to that. If we made a f direct mummy movie, no one would go. Right. Well, Absolutely. Right. I like what you bring up about the idea of, um, you know, the universal monsters being their own kind of horror because yes. it's true. You Absolutely. know, the universal monster movies, th they were scary at the time, of course, but they're they're more character driven in mm -hmm. a, in a way, and I like that. And I I agree with you. I worked with Alex um, on uh, Sleepy Hollow when um, when he was in the full throes of of the first announcing that that they were doing. This and I did the official show, BTS show of Sleepy Hollow. And in talking to Alex, Alex has a huge, we're talking about Alex Kurtzman, yeah. a real um, love and and um, respect for monsters. Yes. If you walk into his office on the Universal lot, there is a giant life-size Karloff Frankenstein oh, creature. Awesome. Um, Amazing. So he, he loves it. And he, he does, he does. He means it. So um, Perry, how about you? What were some of your reactions to this first look? Because we've obviously been a little skeptical yeah, of course. Um, we've all been a little skeptical. I mean, you're going to be skeptical with anything that sure. has material that comes before it. And the same was true here. I was a little more excited, though, than I thought I would be going into this trailer because of the teaser, the trailer teaser, mm -hmm. teaser, trailer, trailer, teaser, yeah, that came last week. So I was a little surprised by the footage and how much I liked that 15 seconds. So, you know, I wouldn't say I was blown away by this trailer, but I do appreciate, I've mentioned this on a number of shows, I really appreciate when trailers don't necessarily do so much quick cutting action and we can just live within one scene yes. and I think being able to experience not necessarily the full airplane sequence but such a big chunk yeah. of it mm -hmm. that's what makes a trailer memorable to me when there's a moment and a, an incident that I can hold on to and get excited yeah. for and what a brilliant marketing strategy to release that behind the scenes which was an excellent cut feature that mm -hmm. was great you could just like feel the the passion radiating out of that piece and that got me really excited but yeah. very smart to release that right after the trailer with what getting to watch them shoot so much footage we just saw in that trailer i think it was great and the one thing in that behind the scenes thing that stuck out to me is i think kurtzman said it he said 
uh, at, referring to monsters. They terrify us, and yet you feel sympathy for them. Mm. And that yeah. goes back to what you were just saying about character. And that right there, if they can achieve that, I really do think this is going to be what we want. Absolutely. John Schnepp, what are some of your reactions here? Um, seeing the trailer and the little behind-the-scenes thing, I mean... It's it's the mummy, but it's a different mummy than maybe what we grew up with, mm -hmm. and I think that's a good thing. I'm I'm I was pleasantly surprised when I first heard Tom Cruise was you know going to be playing the lead, whatever his name is. It's not Van Helsing, but it's something mm -hmm. that's probably going to be like a Van Helsing. It translates like, to Van Helsing. Yeah, yeah, if they're going to yeah. be, but maybe he's not. Just, I'm just hunting Dracula now. He's like I'm the monster hunter or whatever. Obviously, we have. Uh, good monsters and bad monsters. We we get the introduction of Jekyll, but mm -hmm. you know what's coming up? Hyde. Mm -hmm. So you know no. that he's got a duality. He's fighting himself. All of the best monsters have some form of a duality or someone who's fighting against them. There is good and evil, and you do are sympathetic to Frankenstein's mm -hmm. monster. Absolutely. Uh, maybe even less so than Frankenstein yeah, himself. So I mean, I think by taking the entire Universal franchise and making it a thrill ride, which is what this is, and make no mistake, when you see the zero-G plane sequence, it has nothing to do with monsters. It has everything to do with excitement and thrills mm -hmm. and action, and I like that they've injected that into this mummy movie. Um, it, you know, Imhotep or whatever the mm -hmm. character of the, of the female mummy that she's playing, she's going to be a, a ferocious monster, yeah. a good villain. And how about what a great choice, by the way, for her. She's perfect. She's, she's perfect. She's a that. great, a great actress. I thought mm -hmm. she was great in The Kingsman. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, for me, the the trailer did everything that I wanted it to. It's not a rehash of Stephen Summers' The Mummy. Mm -hmm. It's also Thankfully. not a Boris Karloff' The Mummy, which I loved yeah. as a kid. But I think. It needs a refresher. All of the Universal monsters need that kind of refresher. So this makes me more excited to see what Johnny Depp's going to do in The Invisible Man. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do next? Well, how are they going to reboot all these other characters and make it this kind of a thrill ride action monster mix? When I first heard about it, when they were like, we're going to make it like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I was kind of pissed. I was like, F you, don't do that. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm sort of like, I see kind of what they're wanting to do. They're talking about it very trepidatiously. We're not going to just launch into the next one. Yeah. Yes. We want to see how this one's That's taken. what he actually, Alex, yeah. was. He's like, you can't build a universe mm -hmm. just throwing a bunch of characters into one movie. It has to make sense. Yeah. And that's another thing. I feel like he's on, I think he's making the right decision. I really do. And I think we're going to see, and he also mentioned how, you know, you have these different stories. You have Creature from the Black Lagoon, which will be a very different story. Yes. And maybe not as big. So we, we're, they're not relegated to making these big action movies. Right. They can ch they can see where it goes. If audiences respond, I think we have something special. I'm really hoping for it. Well, that actually leads us perfectly into our next segment. We're going to stick with the Universal Mummies for a minute. Because Mummies, the Universal <laughs> Mummies, <laughs> the Universal Monster. Sounds movies. like a delicious cereal. Yeah. I'm <laughs> eating mummies. I love my Universal Mummies. Mm. Uh, no, but we're going to stick with this universe because a lot now that we actually have something tangible to look at, yeah. and Alex is allowed to really start talking. Something else has come up, which I think is pretty interesting. So. Um, I don't know if you discussed this with him, but definitely speaking to Screen Rant at the premiere event, uh, Alex definitively said Luke Evans, Vlad the Impaler, is not nope. part of this universe. Yep. Um, and uh, and he did just to just to sort of read a quote about the you know about the idea of him not necessarily jumping into the franchise just yet. He said, I believe strongly that the only way you can build a universe is not to start by trying to build a universe. If you want to get there, you the only way to get there is if the audience allows you to get there, meaning you do have to do great individual films first. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that that's a really great attitude to have, you know, considering. Um, now, uh, Perry, let's, let's go ahead and start with you. Um, what are your... Okay, so Dracula Untold. Um, we've talked about it on this show before. Not people's favorite. Not didn't kickstart things the way maybe Universal what? would have wanted. <laughs> um, but here's the thing, and I really mean this. I watched Girl on the Train the other night. I didn't know Luke Evans was in it. Mm. He is in it. That is a Universal movie. He, he's got Fast and the Furious. He's got uh, with Universal. He's got Girl on the Train with Universal and and Dracula Untold with Universal. There's something Universal likes Luke Evans. Yeah. And I know what they're saying here, but there's something inside of me that's like, I don't know if this is the last we've seen of Luke Evans. Am I crazy? No, I don't think you're crazy. However, I don't think this is the last we'll see of Luke Evans in Universal. I don't see him at this point based on this quote and given where the franchise is going, him no. reprising that role. And 
I, I think they might be better off at this point not having him come back. And that's after last week. I, I think we discussed this on Movie Talk. I think he deserves another shot mm-hmm. just because I've said this before. I was on that set visit. I saw how hard he worked. I saw mm-hmm. all the backstory that we didn't see in the final cut of the film that could have made that a better movie. And he is a very, I've never a seen. fantastic actor. I've I never like seen a movie with Luke Evans where I thought, oh, Luke Evans is bad in that. No. If, any, no, yeah. if anything, the movie wasn't to his level. So I think he does deserve a shot at maybe playing Dracula again. But I am betting against it, especially given when you've got, you know, Luke Evans is a big name right now. Mm-hmm. But Tom Cruise. Right. Russell Crowe. Johnny Depp. These are all Javier Oscar, Bardem. No, Oscar winners or nominees. Yeah. These are They're, heavy yeah. hitters. They're yeah. going to add someone to that pile of that star power level. So who's it going to be? How about Tom Hiddleston? So, well, someone Tom Hiddleston as Dracula? <laughs> yeah, well, why not? no. That, actually, this awesome. is where, this is where awesome. it came up. It came up on, uh, now I'm remembering, on Friday Movie Talk, it came up in a Twitter question, and I said I wanted Luke Evans back, and then someone tweeted me after the show, and they're like, well, what about Tom Hiddleston? Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I I kind of like. I think we listen, vote. Uh, can we vote for Tom Hiddleston? Listen, yeah. Tom, <laughs> Tom, Tom Hiddleston can you know drink my blood all day long. I <laughs> I'm on board with that, but I don't. The, the darkness that well then again he's okay. got that Loki he's flavor. got the Loki flavor man. Loki is yeah. not scary. He he is, but he he has that ability to go dark. Well, I, mean, I, I saw at, him in what High was Rise a movie? and and oh, Only yeah. Lovers, yeah. Left, lovers left, alive. left Alive. Oh yeah, that's right. Where yeah. but Fantastic. Only Lovers Left Alive. He was a little uh, emo. Yeah, but that movie is amazing. <laughs> I, you have I, never I, seen I Only Lovers Left Alive. Get on that film. Oh, yeah. I Don't, hate Only Lovers Left Alive. Do not listen alive. to Clark Wolf. We have a battle going on. Yeah. I think that's one of the greatest vampire movies ever made. And Bam. I, and yeah. I hate it with a capital <laughs> H-A-T-E. So you're a fan, basically, is I what you're saying. I hate it. Okay. So I don't know how you're going to go home after the show and do a double feature <laughs> of Only Lovers Left Alive, and it follows. No. I can't believe how Clark lies all the time. She watches... <laughs> Only Lovers Left Alive at least twice a day. Yeah, I don't does. know she how like you made twice a day. Tilda Swinton and Aww. Tom Hiddleston as vampires boring as f. Hey, let me let, let me AF, weigh in here. But... You, you know what? You know what's more boring than Only Lovers Left what? Alive? Dracula twice baked. Yeah. I hated okay, this so film. Let's talk about this. It's I your turn, absolutely hate this film. It has nothing to do with Luke Evans. I think he's an amazing yeah. actor. Guess mm-hmm. what? Girl on the Train also sucked, and he was awesome in it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought all the actors did their great, the best they could yeah. with the garbage that they were given right. to act in. So yeah. I feel like Dracula Untold is a is a, a really a big waste of the Dracula legend. Mm-hmm. It gave him way too many powers. He's a giant fist of bats. Give me a break. I mean, look, look, that's the thrill ride I want to get off of. I would jump off the moving roller coaster if I had to see that movie again. At least the mummy does it. It's it's in it's in the same tone as having that kind of thrill ride adventure. Yeah. But it feels like it's if I could say it's more grounded and mm-hmm. less fantastical mm-hmm. than Dracula Untold. Plus, I definitely get the feeling it's going to be a little more grounded, a little bit more. I want a least, better, at least better than. I yeah. want a better Dracula. I, I would love for them to even even do a mixture of Nosferatu or mm. for Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula, mm-hmm. where you had that kind of origin story. Oh yeah, sure. But was a lot darker and and had more weight to it. This just felt like they were trying to mix a love story in there. Plus, they had the tacked on ending where now we're in the modern yeah. world with Charles Dance walking around. Thank God that's not getting and sequelized. I, dude, I agree with you. He wasn't the problem. No, he here. was not. He, he was, was not, not the problem. problem. He was fine yeah well what do you guys think about uh because in dracula untold and i know we're saying we're leaving this behind but i do think it's important to bring up dracula was kind of presented as a hero Mm -hmm. or like a the flawed anti-hero kind of savior of these people and that that honestly was my biggest problem with Mm. the movie i don't want to see dracula be a hero no way big bad yeah i want him to be the big thing that everyone has to unite against so that's my question in this universe do you think can we speculate will could Dracula be the bad guy again? Kind of like Monster Squad. Dracula was the big asshole. Or like Van Helsing. I think he will. Yeah. I actually think he will. I, I think I don't think they're gonna go good guy vampire. I, I'm hoping they learn their lesson from this. They one. probably have. I would hope so. Okay, last question on this for all of you guys about Jekyll. Uh, or I'm sorry, Doctor Hyde. No. What? Yeah, Doctor Jekyll, <laughs> Mr. Hyde. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I meant, I meant they Dr. call him Mr. Hyde. Ah. <laughs> so with with Doctor Jekyll, you know, look, they they put Russell Crowe in a 15 second teaser 
uh, for the trailer. Right. So that was on purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Universal is letting us know Russell Crowe is in this, oh, yeah. and he is heavily featured in in the full length mm -hmm. trailer. Yes, he is. So. Even though Kurtzman says, "Look, you know, yes, we're we're not necessarily uh, planning or hedging our bets and or uh, looking forward. You know, we do have other characters that live in this world, and right. and Henry Jekyll is one of them. So for you guys, do you think that there's a way for this to seamlessly kind of come together, um, or does it feel forced to you? It doesn't feel forced to me. No, um, no, no, from no, what not we've yet. seen, not yet. No. Did that come up with Kurtzman at all? Uh, yeah, well, he did. He he was very insistent on." not putting too many characters in to overbloat it because he this is the beginning and but i feel that he definitely feels that uh that, that russell crowe was that character specifically mixes well with the dracula mm -hmm. well, i'm sorry the mummy mm -hmm. and it doesn't take away from it being the mummy mm -hmm. that's his fear he didn't want to have oh well let's have uh, dracula show up and wave to the camera yeah. you know Dr dracula taking a selfie it it's it, there's nothing silly i don't think <laughs> That we're going to see in this, just him, and yeah. I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah. I think he I'll weigh in that I'm you're all, you've already seen Hyde in that teaser. You know why? Glove, one glove. Why is he wearing that one glove? Because it's already in mid transformation. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some aspect to where he's not just drinking a serum and oh, turning yeah. into a monster. It's going to be this kind of overall transform transformative aspect. That's my guess. I don't know. That's a yeah. good guess, Barry. One of the quotes I wrote down from that event was, "Whatever characters Tom may meet over the course of the Mummy movie have to be part of the Mummy movie. It cannot take you out of that." Mm -hmm. Yes. A great thing to say if he actually executes it that way. I think we're not going to have a problem in the world. And I, I'm getting the feeling that Russell Crowe will probably be the connective tissue that mm -hmm. brings all of these movies yeah, together. He's some so, form yeah. of archaeologist yeah. slash, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, he's that a makes doctor. Sense, yeah. too. His, his character is the sense. one with the understanding oh, yeah. of all the monsters. Yeah. Yeah. So Did, yeah, Is his character responsible for bringing Tom Cruise back to life? That's a good After question. the plane wow. crash, Could that be? is a good that question. That is my guess, Doctor Jekyll. I don't Jekyll. think so. No. I, I don't think you're so. right. I bet it is the female mummy, and they have some kind of connection. That's what I that's think. That's what it's got. That's what I yeah. think. That's yeah. what crossed my mind while I was watching the trailer. But yeah. now that because you say again, it, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility either. Alex Kurtzman also loves those monster movies because there is always an element of a love story. Yeah. Whether there's an Invisible Man, Dracula, the Mummy, there's always a love story. Tom Cruise is the reincarnation of Bubba Hotep or whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually very curious to see if the Anoxine Moon Emotep, you know, kind of uh, from the original film and the Stephen Summers movie, like mm. if there's some, did they they just rename her essentially? Is she looking for her lost lover that was mm. cursed in the, you know, in her life? Uh, who knows? I'm super excited. And this was a good conversation. Good go good job, guys. Yeah. I feel yeah. very yeah. good about what we've done here so far. Me too. Um, and so I'm not so sure about it, but whatever. <laughs> I, guess we'll, I guess we'll move on. Right? <laughs> so we'll move from a uh, fun, happy uh, universal family friendly times to things that are not fun universal family friendly times and that is the Belco experiment. Welcome oh. to Belco Industries. In a twisted social experiment, a group of 80 Americans are locked in their high rise corporate office in Bogota, Colombia and ordered by an unknown voice coming from the company's intercom system to participate in a deadly game of kill or be killed. The red band trailer of the Belco experiment was released last Last week, uh, and it um, it was written by James Gunn, directed by Wolf Creek's John McLean and Greg McLean. Oh, thank you, John oh. McLean is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. directed by the guy from Die Hard. Yeah, was... Directed by Bruce. <laughs> Bruce Willis's character from Die Hard. I'm glad I'm here for you. <laughs> I have it written down right, too. I just read it wrong. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be a very different movie. Although they could, have, IA, mother. Yeah. they could have probably used John McLean in the Belco offices. Oh, okay. my God. They yeah. could have used so, him. So... Greg McLean mm. is directing, and the movie stars John Gallagher Jr., uh, Tony Goldwyn, John C. McGinley, and Michael Rooker. The experiment begins on March 17th. And David Del Rio. Don't forget David Del Rio. Who else is in it? You Keep going. <laughs> well, he, he's directing Sick for Toys, so that's all I care about. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. The, and the man who's directing Jimmy O's uh, next Michael movie. Rooker. I Michael just Rooker. said Did that. you say that? Okay. Let me do my show. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll let you do it. No, but uh, so <laughs> Jimmy o and I were at this, uh, they threw like an office Christmas party um, themed premiere for yeah. the Red Band trailer. And that was pretty cool. Uh, they had like kill kill cocktails and nice. there were tacos, which was delicious. Oh, my um, gosh. But uh, the reaction was, of course, it was, it was amazing uh, yeah. to the trailer. So, Schnepp, let me start with you. Now, 
I we've been hearing a lot about this. I think it screened like once at mm. TIFF and then Blumhouse swooped in and grabbed it and was like, nope, this right. is ours. No mm -hmm. one else. Yeah. Um, you know, do you think uh, this is going to be an R rated really looks like a dark comedy to me? What what did you think when you finally saw a red band trailer? Loved it. Uh, return of James Gunn's uh, Slither yeah. and Tromeo yeah. and Juliet, that kind of that's what I love about James Gunn. He comes from the, you know, the horror base uh, that we're all big fans of. Mm. And he's making amazing films. Of course, we love Guardians, but yes. I, I'm happy that he's able to get a film out there uh, of this kind of like a battle royale, but inverted inside somebody's, uh, you know, weird apartment. It's like a, you know, apartment construct or something. It was like office buildings where people are going to have to murder each mm -hmm. other to, to survive. I mean, it, it, the trailer is, is really great. I mean, it, it sets you up. You know exactly where, where you're going to get. Just like Office yeah. Christmas Party. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what you're going to get yeah. for two hours. It's a big, stupid Office Christmas Party. It's called Office Christmas. This is called the Belco Experiment. I don't know about the title. Reminds me of, uh, you know, Hill Street Blues. Remember that guy, Belker? It was like, oh, yeah, the yeah. Belker Experiment. But maybe Belco is the company, whatever. It's it, the, the title actually doesn't matter. What mm -hmm. the content of it is, is like, you're all going to have to kill each other to get out of this alive. That's the fun of this kind of film. So I'm looking forward to it. And the trailer didn't give too much away, mm -hmm. which I was very happy mm -hmm. with. I was hoping like I wouldn't see too many kills of characters that you're like, oh, is that person going to live? Well, no, I saw them die in yeah. the minute yeah. one of the trailer. So I'm really looking forward to seeing it. We this. also have three months to go. I mean, th th there's a lot of time in March, between. Yeah. yeah, now yeah. And, and then. Perry, you know, I know you were, we were all kind of excited mm -hmm. about this to, to begin with. Um, did the trailer do it for you? Did it make you more excited? No. Yeah. Um, no, no. I was really hyped when I heard about this at TIFF. I, I just love this concept. I don't care if people out there are saying, well, it's a bit of a real knockoff. All right, yeah, fine. It has some sort of narrative connectivity with Great. that movie. So but is Hunger Games. I, yeah, yeah, Hunger Games is exactly <laughs> I mean, a You could really off. say yeah. that in just about any situation much, where yeah. people have to kill their peers or colleagues or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it off. But what is it, The 10th Victim? There's a million of these movies. Yeah, and there are. The most dangerous game is books yeah. written and about And I don't care. Stories because you know what my sick and twisted mind finds it damn entertaining so i'm really looking forward to this movie yeah. this trailer didn't meet my expectations though there was something about it where i wanted to spend a little more time like hanging out with the office people yep. or you know yeah. you i think in order for a scenario like this to play effectively in a two minute 30 second trailer is if Let's say 30 seconds of it is devoted to just going into the office, hanging out with the uh, with whoever's in the cubicle next to you, just figuring out what daily life is like in that company. And then all of a sudden the intercom kicks in and it's just, oh, my God, what's yeah, happening? Chaos. Then you get the head explosion. That would have been a little <laughs> more effective to me. But the only other thing that puts me off a little bit and it could work in the full feature for all I know the the tracers in their head bother me mm -hmm. that just feels like a, a, from like New York. a device yeah. so uh, i i don't understand who would ever take a job at a facility that's like all right sign your contract and then put yeah. a tracer in your head we were talking i was talking about this with somebody and it's it's like black mirror it's like that episode of black mirror with your you know the thing that's in the back of your mm -hmm. neck but you can't take mm -hmm. it out um okay i you know and perry by the way like even i love james i'm super excited for the movie regardless but i will agree with you for me the red band trailer actually did kind of leave something to be desired and i think you're right i think it was the idea of I think they approached the trailer with this idea of you already know what this is and so mm. let's just get to the good stuff, good stuff in quote fingers. But I would have liked a little more character development. It's like disaster movies. Like right. The best part about a disaster movie is when you see daily life go to yeah. hell and things start to get crazy. I wow. always, My favorite part of disaster movies is always the first thing third of the movie. Sure. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, and so, Jimmy, you were uh, at the event that I, I was, was at. I was at the event, and yeah. And you spoke with some of the cast and, and the team behind it. So what, what were your reactions to the trailer, and did they say anything to you that you found particularly interesting? Well, I know. I did talk to David. He's He has seen it, I guess I can say. I, I He didn't tell he's me much about it. it. But, yeah, he's, he's, seen, he's seen the film. He really dug it. Um, I'm with you. I really enjoyed the trailer because I didn't watch anything of it. I, I kind of, because I, I, I knew Greg had talked about it and I knew I would talk to him a few weeks ago about it. I was really excited about it just because I, I love the Wolf Creek movies. I love what he's done with the series. So I'm a big fan of his work in general. 
Um, I'm stoked. I just I think the cast looks great. I love I love that Michael Rooker is involved. Mm-hmm. I love when, I love anything he does with James Gunn. Um, I'm in 100. percent I think it could be a real. I, I think it looks like it has a balance of comedy with really mm. sick sadistic horror, and that's what James Gunn did with all the trauma years. Yeah. I, I really like that. Uh-huh. I'm, that's, I guess, what I was really excited to see yeah. that return to what I'm used to from his original earlier yeah. work. Well, um, a lot of filmmakers are afraid to do that, too. Once they get big, they're right. like, well, I'm not going to. But nowadays we're having, no. you know, James Wan still making horror films. Yes. So I, it's kind yeah. of inspiring. The gun is are, back. Yeah, the gun is back. <laughs> well, but, I'm curious when he wrote this script. Meaning, like, did he write this in between Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, like, I don't you know. know. It's or a good was question. It, I, Gun, James Gunn, please James, answer on yeah. Twitter. Yeah. I should, Twitter. I should when did you ask? Ask? We should just, you yeah. should ask yeah. him on his just Facebook. Just ask him yeah. on his I'm Facebook sure, or I'm Twitter. Sure he'll answer, yeah. Yeah. You know, might, that's, yeah. a, uh, that's a cool idea for a second trailer, though, because it's three months away. I would love to see like what you were suggesting, like somebody just like stapling stuff mm-hmm. at, on your, at their stupid office job. Like, yeah. this is so boring. And like, you know, oh, what you know what's not boring? Trying to kill everyone. It's like, oh, you should be happy you have a good job like this. Now you're going to have to murder everyone. It's yeah. like they could do a trailer like that. I'm sure like the first 30 minutes is pure setup. I'm sure it is. I'm, I'm sure that's in the movie and I'm sure they accomplish it. I, mm-hmm. I, have, a, I yeah. have a really good vibe about this. Yeah, one. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. I just, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, let's move on to some video game news. OMG, you guys. This one was pretty cool. So one of the things that got Twitter the most excited last week was the first trailer for, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I know you will, uh, Hideo? Yeah, Hideo uh, sure. Kojima. Don't look at me for that. One. Sure, All right. That's why not? <laughs> Sounds perfectly correct, Clark. Great. I well, like uh, it. So his, his latest gaming endeavor uh, called Death Stranding. The trailer, which according to Kojima uh, contains many hints and misleads, premiered uh, at. Um, it pre- okay, so the first trailer for the game premiered last week, and fans were left both intrigued and confused, featuring a character that looks exactly like Guillermo del Toro uh-huh. uh, and actor Matt. Mickelson, uh, Death Stranding also stars Norman Reedus, and Reedus's character is the one that you will play as when you play the game. Uh, Death Stranding is a console exclusive to PS4, but will also be available for PC. And while the game is still a ways away, it's fun to speculate, speculate and analyze the new adventure. All right, so team, what the hell is going on in this crazy teaser? We've got Guillermo del Toro carrying babies. We have <laughs> monsters are like bad, you know, army guys in the background yeah. Mads Mikkelsen's eyes are bleeding again uh, um, so right. Schnepp yeah. what are your thoughts I love this teaser trailer and they're forcing me to buy a PlayStation 4 <laughs> I'll hold out until this game comes out and I you know as the, the, the the game designer you know left on bad terms with Konami yeah. so I'm very oh my god the <laughs> saws have fallen apart everything. Uh, I'm, uh, so I'm really happy to see that not only is he doing a new original yeah. game but he's got the you know Guillermo del Toro backing him he's got Mads Mikkelsen. Mads Mikkelsen can be in nothing bad. If you haven't seen Man and Chicken, uh, check that out. I'm right there with you. You gotta oh see that movie. See, we yeah. agree. All right, finally, Clark, we agree on something. <laughs> Only Lovers Left Alive is one of the greatest vampire movies ever. It's Believe me. It's terrible. So and boring. anyway, no, it's this great. It's Death great. Stranding is a really cool title. It's odd. It's weird. Exactly what you get with this trailer. You get like literally three minutes of. Guillermo del Toro kind of like hobbling around with a, <laughs> yeah. a strange baby in a jar, looking up at weird tentacle tanks, and then him sweating, and then seeing the same thing like four or five times. Like, what is going on with this trailer? Then we go follow a little floaty plastic baby into a you know a, 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 like a weird tube way with a Mads Mikkelsen and a bunch of armed dudes, and they got tentacles and stuff. I don't know what the hell this game is, but I cannot wait to experience it and get nightmares from it. All the nightmares. <laughs> All right, Perry, how about you? They should recut that trailer and have you narrate the entire thing. <laughs> I would love that. That would be amazing. Um, th- it looks cool to me. Yeah. I probably won't buy a PlayStation 4 and play it, to be completely honest, but it looked cool. I can never turn down GDT or Mads Mikkelsen, mm-hmm. and the thought of you know being able to play Norman Reedus in a game is pretty cool, too. <laughs> I like the visuals. I you know I see something like this, and my mind goes to, oh, too bad this isn't a trailer for a movie, because this seems like a cool world mm-hmm. with great atmosphere and really great little components to it. I, but one of my favorite parts of this was seeing how Mads Mikkelsen's character controls the, the other guys, I think, mm. through those, those tentacle things. Mm. I thought that was a nice touch. So I wouldn't mind 
if you buy it, you sit there and play it, and I'll just sit over your shoulder and I'll watch you. I'll be like, I'm, I'm, I'm at another cutscene, so just watch the cutscene. <laughs> well, that's a great idea. We can just come over to your place and yeah. we'll just watch you play. Yeah. Well, I do think it's worth mentioning too that so the reason that the bad break with Konami happened was uh, Kojima and Guillermo were teamed up for Silent Hills, and if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, Norman Reedus was supposed to be the lead in that. If, am I right? Yeah, Cody's giving me the yes. Okay, so basically this is kind of like a treat for the fans who were so excited for Silent Hills with this combination, and then Konami pulls the plug because they don't think that it's important, and now here you go. It seems like it's kind of got the vibe of all that could have been in Silent Hills, yeah. but just way more crazy, which is kind of exciting for the fans. Jimmy O, what was your reaction to watching this trailer? I just, I got excited over the star power. Mads yeah. and, and, and Guillermo. I'm yeah. like, I'm kind of sold on that. I'm not going to go buy a P, <laughs> a, a place at whatever for PS4. Yeah. PS4. I'm not going to do that. I'm just coming over to your house. All right. That's all. We're going to have a, yeah. a, a play, a play slash viewing party. It's like bizarre how like video game, like I was always kind of con interested in video game horror movies, but now they look amazing. They're like, yeah. oh my God, this is, I want to see this movie really yeah. bad. Well, that is a perfect segue to get into the next one yeah. uh, because another video game property that has people buzzing is one we discussed just a few weeks back. Uh -huh. At the Blu-ray luncheon for Don't Breathe, producer Sam Raimi was on hand to give an update on Sony's feature film adaptation of the popular game, The Last of Us. And while the cinematic news was unfortunate, fans of the franchise were treated to a big event when the trailer for The Last of us part two premiered at the PlayStation Live experience. Featuring both Ellie and Joel a few years older and definitely more worse for the wear, it would seem that Ellie is hellbent on revenge with Naughty Dog's Neil Druckmann explaining that quote, the story is about hate. Cinema Blend speculates that the fans can anticipate a new game sometime in 2018. So we were talking about this at the pre-production meeting. I wish I could play video games. The only video game that I can play is that game Limbo, which is an amazing game. That's Cody's not his head. Yeah. yeah it's Very hard. hard. It's a hard I game. love that game, but it's not one of those in the world where you have to look around and there's something behind yeah. you. You know, my brain and thumbs do not speak to each <laughs> other <laughs> to allow me to play games like I would no. want to, but I watched this trailer and my reaction, like you just said, was, damn, I want to watch this movie. Yeah. Um, so I'm at a loss because I don't think I'm going to learn how to magically play video games and be good enough to play this. Uh, but so did you have a similar reaction to this one? Oh, yeah. Well, my, I wish I could like play these games. Like I wish I had like a, a, an idiot version where you can you can just walk through and just do everything and, and you don't have to worry about getting killed repeatedly because right. that's all I do is every time I play one of these games I just die within two minutes but yeah it looks amazing I mean it looks amazing and it kind of does make me like hope that well maybe the movie will be good yeah maybe. or maybe. Schnapp you were saying that maybe the screenwriter might have took some of his ideas yeah just similar to uh, Hideo mm -hmm. and uh, Death Stranding this echoes to me a little bit where they're like uh, we don't really like your screenplay creator of this amazing, <laughs> insanely popular video game. So we're just going to hold off on doing that. And he's like, yeah, I think I'm just going to take that screenplay that you don't appreciate and make it a billion dollar game <laughs> sequel. <laughs> suck it. Yeah. I think that feels like a giant suck and I'm making exactly what you said. I can't guess what the game's about hate because I'm hating on this yeah. company that's not letting me make this film. That's what it feels like. Yeah. More power to this guy because I think, you know, just like uh, the girl with all the gifts, mm -hmm. this kind of version of zombie zombies but kind of mushroomy weirder mm -hmm. a, a different take on zombies mm -hmm. is exciting and with this cinematic take on it i mean it's a it's a it's one that i'm gonna definitely buy perry this is not necessarily the opposite reaction that i had to the last one but this is something that could get me to buy the appropriate console and actually mm -hmm. play it i i can play games i used to play games when i was younger but as i grew up and started working all the time there just isn't enough time. It, yeah. I have so much yeah. respect for people who do what we do, but for games, because mm -hmm. in my mind, it's always something along the lines of, what if you can't get past a certain level? Can you not complete the game and then review the game? But anyway, I, I do really want to experience the story. And at, at this point, after all of the talking we've done mm -hmm. about the movie adaptation, and after I've seen, I've seen, you know, this trailer and, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but these trailers, like this one in particular at least, that's not gameplay right. footage. Correct. That's just this like, is, a, yes. It's, it's a cinematic. cinematic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, well, having watched this trailer, having seen gameplay footage from the original, I, I'm on the cusp of, you know, the moment I have some free time, it might be dedicated mm -hmm. towards finally playing this game. Let me add, though, that the gameplay will be as almost close to this as possible. The, what the, the levels and jumps they've done and just re-rendering even older games and re-releasing what they call them as remastered mm -hmm. is incredible. So I wouldn't be surprised if the gameplay, you're that character and then it's just like all of a sudden now you're just moving the character around like within this world, that, that realistic. Wow. I mean, I, if you're afraid of playing games because you think you suck at games, a good tip is you could run through most of the mm. levels to avoid whatever creatures are chasing you or whatnot and kind of that's how i used to play a lot of games i, I would like run through an area <laughs> and just so i could find out where the hell i'm supposed to yeah, go but it's they like don't go find there. like a key or something i'm like i don't know where the those are the games I, I usually avoid those games <laughs> okay. if i gotta go find some stuff i'm not playing yeah, i gotta go no. kill a bunch of people and run through stuff and get on a horse red dead redemption you know get on that that's an so awesome I, I read funny story about red dead redemption i tried to play that game and i somehow <laughs> ended up on the back of a horse and a bear ate me because I couldn't figure out how to draw Aww. my weapon and shoot. So I literally was eaten by a bear but on the, top of a horse. I hope someone watches Nightmares and starts right at that point. And it's just like, what is going Why on? Why should I get eaten by a bear? Well, they're dangerous. And they, they you, are. you were at a bad place. I was. When yeah. bears show up, I you was. Bad but my, my weapon was right here, and I just like could not figure out how to do it. You needed Leo DiCaprio with you. Oh, yeah. You right. could have got that bear for you. That's right yeah. leo where were you yeah. um okay so that's gonna do it for fresh meat let's move on to our favorite thing to do and you can scream along with us are you ready i'm ready what's in the box what's ah! in the box what's in the box what's in the box what's in the box very good that was good good wow, job that was, that was good everyone i feel good <laughs> about it um okay so th this is great last week here on collider nightmares we announced that uh we are going to be presenting a screening of the penultimate episode of fox's the exorcist this friday in los angeles but what we can now confirm and what we uh if you watch movie talk you saw a little thing run before it gina davis is gonna be there yeah. oh my God. Uh, awesome. it's all very very exciting we can't wait to have her the show has become i mean perry's caught up mm -hmm. are you caught up on the exorcist i've never watched okay it. well the show has taken some amazing twists and turns in the first season and now it's all coming down to this i'm calling it the penultimate episode but uh i know jeremy slater the creator who will also be there has called it a first part in a oh, two part nice. um I may have seen it already. Wow. And, and it is really, it ends on another cliffhanger. So cliffhangers galore. Nice. Uh, wow. it, you don't want to miss it. So if you will be in the Southern California area or the Los Angeles area, yep, like I'll you do, yo. Um, and you are available uh, at 6.30 p.m. on Friday night, this Friday. You can RSVP to tcftv.events at fox.com. Guys, are you so excited? Um, yes. Oh, my God. Can't wait. I, I don't need know to what watch the show. I keep hearing now. it's so good. You should catch up. Yeah, yeah I, I hear it's, it's great. Worth, it's worth yeah, watching. I, I watched the first two, and I was like, eh, and then I watched, I caught up, and I was like, I still have to watch two more. Mm -hmm. okay. This, I'm almost this has definitely caught. exceeded my expectations. Wow. And we've yeah. discussed the twist on the show. I'm not going to blurt it out now right. again. Right. But that was something where I thought it was going to upset me, and it did not. So mm -hmm. now I'm really hyped to see what comes next. And what I'm is it? What's the twist? Well, well we, we can't say. <laughs> but but I will. But you know, to that to that point, I I similarly kind of said, okay, now that I know what this is. Um, I need a minute. Like, I need to process mm -hmm. the rest of the season before I decide. And then uh, the cliffhanger at the end of episode 108 was also another Good. thing where... I saw it coming, but I kind of was like, oh boy, I don't know how I feel about this. Well, well, I think well that's it, good to know because I got to watch episode way. eight. Yeah. So. It paves the way to, to good things and lots of opportunities for, for people working on this show. It absolutely does. And uh, I'm and so if you have any questions that you might want us to ask of Miss Davis and company, if you're a fan of The Exorcist and you want to talk to ask Jeremy Slater a question or the girls or Gina, um, please tweet them at us slash uh, me. And and um, we will hopefully get to ask a couple of them. We may or may not be filming this uh, yeah. for Collider Video. What? 
Um, so yeah, so be sure to send in your questions and be sure to RSVP to tcftv.events at fox.com, y'all. Woohoo! Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and move into our jump scares. Ooh, uh, <laughs> ooh. Ooh. Where's the cat? <gasps> Spooky! Uh, okay, so <laughs> The Autopsy of Jane Doe is a movie that I thoroughly enjoyed um, at Fantastic Fest a few months back. The movie won Best Horror Feature at Fantastic Fest this year, and it stars Emil Hirsch and Brian Cox. Now, I... What are you laughing at? No, no, there's the faces. Yeah. Well, well, it's a jump scare. I'm but wait, terrified. wait until you see the movie, and then look at that face again. Because mm -hmm. every, every time... Ooh. I'm not yeah. going to spoil anything. But okay. You know. Well, have well, nightmares speak just from that face. Yeah, that's, I think, scared. the idea yeah. <laughs> is that you would be scared of it. So here's the thing. I walked into this movie knowing basically nothing. Mm. The the tagline or the, the short synopsis that was in the Fantastic Pro Fest program was this. And I'm only reading it to you because I feel like it doesn't explain the movie at all. Um, when a mysterious body turns up at a crime scene, the local sheriff turns to the coroner and his son to find the cause of death. Now that the, oh, that's it. <laughs> That's it. So wow. uh, I was I was gonna keep reading, but that is just like so not what the movie. I mean, it is what it's about, but it's not the feeling. So anyway, the point is, um, the movie's getting a release from I'm FC Midnight this Christmas. I highly recommend that you see it, but a new trailer just came out. Uh, and um, I got to say, I think it really shows you, like, way too much. Um, I know that the hype machine for Jane Doe, like, might be working overtime, and so I'm afraid that people's expectations are going to be too high yeah. um but uh but i don't know i want to put it to you guys like i didn't require y'all to watch the trailer mm -hmm. um and and i think it's up to you you know watch it at your own discretion but we talk about it on this show a lot horror in specific showing the scares or showing mm -hmm. the thing that that you know should uh, result in tension so what are your thoughts maybe with respect to jane doe perry you've seen jane doe I've, i have seen so, it and i watched this trailer mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's anything crazy spoilers. You just ruined the whole movie with this trailer. Mm -hmm. Maybe they showed a little too much. I love that synopsis. That, that synopsis is basically the information that comes across in the first 10 minutes of the movie. Right. And in my ideal world, every trailer would essentially function as a first act of a movie. Amen. Right. However, this, this is an industry that needs to make money and needs to draw attention. Yeah. And as much as I appreciate that, the large majority might not, and there's no doubt that the large majority do like those, you know, quick cutting action trailers mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. and that gets a lot of butts and seats. But, you know, I'm I'm on the cusp in terms of, you know, telling people you should check that trailer out or you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. If you like to go into things knowing nothing, don't watch it. Yeah. But if you if you don't mind and I don't know if that would have affected how I felt about the movie in the end anyway. I love the movie, I highly recommend it. But trailers in general I mean, we talked about this earlier with The Mummy. You guys know what style trailer appeals to me, and it's being able to exist in the environment in a particular scene. I think The Mummy trailer does that really mm -hmm. well. I don't know how many... I'm sure you've watched Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. There's another great mm, example yeah, of... It's terrific. Of for the, it's got its quick-cutting action part, yes. but for the most part, it's, it's two scenes. You get to sit there for two scenes with two jokes that because that's what the trailer focuses on... You're not going to forget it. And you know what? I guarantee you there's dozens, if not hundreds of more jokes in that movie. Right. So it doesn't spoil you anything. You know nothing no. about the film. Right. No. There's You're like, nothing. No story Just information in that entire Just great character interaction. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really fun. I absolutely love that trailer. It's not really horror related, but you should have seen it by now. <laughs> it's called Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Get on that. It's really a fun trailer. Yeah, it's a great trailer. This trailer, though, the uh, what's it called? Again? The Autopsy, Autopsy of Jane Doe. The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> um, I saw the first trailer that yeah. they released, I guess, like four or five months mm -hmm. ago, where they don't really give away too much. There's like a lot of those quick mm -hmm. cuts of like maybe some crawling out of somebody's mouth or a few different kind of, uh, you know, slightly upsetting autopsy style things. Um, but I liked what I saw, but I, I understand why this trailer exists. And this trailer does exist for like exactly what Perry was talking about. It's to sell the, the every person to mm -hmm. go see it because I was already sold when I saw the first trailer yeah. and I was planning on seeing this film. I didn't need another trailer and I didn't also need to see the supernatural elements 
that are revealed in this trailer. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything. You could watch the trailer, but it wow. gives you a little. It's a tell that gives you a little bit. I'm sure it doesn't give you everything, but it lets you know that there's more than just a body. There's a lot of other things going on, and it looks frightening as hell. I mean, I was I was like thought the trailer was really well done. I wasn't angry like God damn it they ruined mm -hmm. it, but I feel like it's like Star Wars where you don't show spoilers. The Death Star explodes <laughs> in the movie Star Wars. Dude, but, you just killed it for me. But you see all the X wings diving into that thing, and they're like, "We've got to hit that port or whatever." So they're kind of showing you basically the end of the movie, but no one ever really got mad at Star Wars because they didn't show the Death Star blow up. So I feel like with this trailer, like with tra trailers in general, as long as you don't show the end end and you get the kind of excitement and the build up. It makes people, at least it makes most of the modern audiences like, oh man, I want to see that. I want to see when that dead girl's walking down that hallway. I don't know when that happens, but it seems like it happens because they showed you in the trailer and it's not just a girl on a slab. If I may, sorry, because you have something very good to say because we talked about it at the pre-meeting, yeah. but I want to just read the synopsis one more time. When a mystery body turns up at a crime scene, the local sheriff turns to the coroner and his son to find the cause of death. You do not know about the supernatural elements Nothing, in this trailer. Right. I just was like, when you walk in and it's a surprise, that's awesome. And... Okay, so you particularly had a reaction to this. Yeah, when I got the show notes, uh, I read what we were talking about, and I said, absolutely not. I will not watch it. I don't want to see it. I didn't see the original trailer. Mm -hmm. I've actually really taken to, unless I absolutely have to watch a trailer, I won't. Yeah. Because, you know, you can't avoid, like, Guardians of Galaxy and Baby Groot. Hmm. Oh. But you can't avoid, especially horror has become just... I, even The Conjuring, I remember mm -hmm. when that trailer came out, I was like, gave away one of the best scenes in the movie. Yes. I'm like, hey, look, it worked. Mm -hmm. People went. But I, I'm kind of getting tired of it. I right. don't, I, I love walking into, I saw The Babadook, mm -hmm. no, knew nothing. Yeah. And it was brilliant. I saw Blair Witch, knew nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually an example. The, the latest Blair Witch, yeah. that's the only one that comes to my mind this year of just one of the worst instances of spoiling everything in the movie yes because they released mm -hmm. that trailer i think they did they release the trailer immediately after yes. they screened at a comic-con yeah. yes immediately so i saw it at that comic-con screening they released the trailer and every single little note i took about really cool scares i i, I think every single yeah. one of them was in that trailer yeah and yeah. the first trailer of for the woods was so effective yes. so good because yeah, yeah, you yeah. knew nothing i still mm -hmm. say i want to see the woods I, and i'm not joking yeah, when yeah, i say yeah. i want to see that version i think the rest of america agreed with you i, I, I loved, loved blair i love blair Witch. i did we too so did. Did I. Yeah, but yeah. but you're a lot, a lot of America agrees with you. I yeah. still, you know, yeah. quote, I still want to see the woods. I think that's a great way to sum it up. It's, it's, no. but again, with marketing, we should do another one of these conversations about marketing <laughs> right. because um, I actually have a lot to say about this with regards to um, the witch um, and uh, audience interpretation, mm. but especially yeah. with something like, you know, keeping things hidden and then revealing them and who gets an experience of knowing nothing. Yeah, I walked right. into the, the woods and knew nothing. Mm -hmm. That's how I saw you, it. You know, yeah. but, and you walked into the woods and didn't know. And then the rest of America walked into Blair Witch. Right, I walked into Blair there Witch. There you go. So. so it's like. I walked into Blair Witch. Oh, you, oh someone you spoiled it for me. Oh, okay. Shame, shame. But I still love the movie. Was it me? It wasn't me, right? No. I didn't spoil it. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> so, all right, we'll put a pin in this for now, but I have a feeling we will return to this. So, um, before we go, let's go ahead and get into your Twitter questions. Tweet, tweet, yeah. tweet, tweet. Tweet. Uh, okay, so first up, at it's Mr. Lewis or Louis or whichever uh, asks, can you watch a scary movie at any time or only in a specific setting? For me, it's at night when it's dark. Um, great question. I will mm. tell you a story. A couple of years ago when I was doing a podcast called The Bloodcast, we crossed over with another podcast called Killer POV. You were on those. I was. Um, and we did our end of year list and I was so behind on so many movies. I watched Maniac uh, at 6 a.m. Mm. because I really wow. had to I had to watch these movies to get before our recording and um, 
it didn't have an effect on me one way or another. Hmm. Really? Yeah, it really, really? didn't. I, I, you know, I, I think it just depends on your temperament, I suppose. Mm. But for me, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. I think if anything, it's the environment of like, are people talking? Do you have you yeah. a movie maniac didn't have an effect on you? And I'm like, really? Well, most really? of it didn't. I mean, oh. I, I like the opening right. sequence, but, but here's the thing, you. though. You watched it like probably in your apartment with yes. sunlight and like be eating some cereal and stuff. <laughs> like <laughs> if you watched. <laughs> If you watched Maniac at six in the morning in a theater in a darkened environment, she was yeah. eating a bowl of the mummies. So, yeah, you <laughs> eating her mummies. I don't know. It's not too frightening. What do you think, morning squirrel? <laughs> little squirrels right there. Yeah, it's not scary. Because you know, I wake up every morning with my little bird and morning squirrel, That's and right. I go, "What do you think?" Do you have a name for the squirrel? You know, like Squirrely. Steven Seagal. Squirrely. Steven his, Seagal. His name is Body oh, You just name everything Precious. Like Precious. <laughs> precious? I precious. like that name. The clown is Precious. I can oh, watch a horror movie at any time, and I, I could enjoy it any time. I was even joking earlier. 3 p.m., yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Three in the morning. It's, it doesn't matter to me, and I, and I do. I watch horror movies at any time, whenever I want, whenever I have. Oh, I've got a cool two hours. Sometimes I will wake up early in the morning before we even come to do the Collider Show, and I'll watch an entire film because time is precious. Like you were talking about, sometimes you're like, man, I, especially talking about playing video games, you're like, hey, mm. I want to see these nine films. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and you're like, if you don't see those nine films that week, another nine have shown up. Mm -hmm. So you're like, it's a constant battle. And it's not even that hard to have nine movies, three horror movies, three comedies, three yeah. action films. Just forget about all the Oscar nominees. So you're like, Ugh. it's a battle, especially this time of the year. So I don't have any problem watching films at any time. Horror specifically, though, like it's just the mind state. So mm -hmm. some people mm. could get more distracted if it is the daytime or whatnot. Or, you know, it's like I try to like just turn my phone off and mm -hmm. pretend the phone doesn't exist. Yeah. If the movie is boring or sucks, be all of a sudden the phone exists. <laughs> exactly. So that's, you know, you could like leave your phone out of reach. And that's a good test for you. If like maybe it's a good test of your ability to concentrate or if the movie sucks. Yeah. Then pick your pick your battles. <laughs> All right, Perry. Um, I think I have to say I don't care what time of day it is because I do. I I have this that problem with award screeners right now. There's so oh, many things that I yeah. feel obligated to to have watched before mm. a certain time of the year, and I I'm talking like dozens of movies where. You know, I, I feel guilty when I don't watch everything that's nominated in the foreign film and documentary try, category. Yeah, and yeah, and it's tough to get even the short films. I, I feel bad when I don't watch everything. So I'm watching all day long if I have any free time. The only reason I would want to watch something in the dark, obviously I'd prefer a dark room, but I don't care if it's daylight outside. What I do care is when there's glare on my TV. Mm. So that's the only yes. time I'll, I'll shut the blinds, shut off all the lights. One thing I have grown to love, though, is watching movies on planes and i don't mean the the tv right in front of me on the plane i mean when i'm holding my mm. ipad i just love like even if i'm laying in bed at night wherever mm. i am i love having it right up to my face because something something about it it's like everything goes away and mm. i feel like i'm in my own little movie watching pod especially mm -hmm. when it's a good movie i actually i i watched nocturnal animals recently oh, on the plane so flying good. back here and i was all upset at first because you know i'm thinking i'd rather see this on the big screen but I couldn't get into any of the screenings because of scheduling reasons. And that was a, a perfect example of a movie that I watched, you know, on my little screen and was completely sucked into it. And I think I might have had a better experience for that. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, you know, what's, I do actually have a preference. I for me, a, when you really want to watch a horror movie, I'll do it like at nine o'clock at night, eight o'clock at night. Make sure everything make sure the kids are asleep. Make sure I can just watch and I can just devote time. But because I absolutely love horror, I'll watch it anytime. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But that's my preferred time. Sure. Well, I want to add a question. Uh, when I, we saw Lights Out, you you were there with your kid. Did yeah. your kid like Lights oh Out? Oh, my God, he loved it. Because that was a really fun, that was a jumpy movie. It was I was, like, fun, jumping out jumpy. of my chair. Yeah. I, and I love taking him to movies like that. Like, I don't like taking him to movies that are a little more, like, I wouldn't, I, like, The Purge. I don't like, right. like, mm -hmm. I, and, uh, not that I don't like those movies. I just feel like. Mm, you got to be kind of pick sure. and choose with what you. I'm not going to take my kid to see like Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> but you'll sure. take him to see Mother's Day. No, I didn't. Yes, you, you didn't did. See that. I saw you no, there. You were both there. Oh, that. Oh, not. I thought you meant the uh, da Darren Bowsman Mother's no, Day. No, yeah, no, no. Not the murder no. Mother's Day. I, the, not 
<laughs> well, I see, my, my son. I thought she said. I yeah, really too, like that with movie, the weird though. dead body. No. Yeah, Mother's Day. <laughs> Mother's <laughs> Day was, uh, yeah. I uh, my son has a thing. If a girl is really hot in a movie, uh, he's all right. he's all for it. All right. So I think he's that's reasonable. Yeah, he's a teenager. <laughs> he likes he likes pretty girls. So there. You go. And there there was a couple of pretty girls in Mother's Day. Fine, God, fine. that movie sucked. Though. Okay, yeah. we're gonna <laughs> move on from Mother's Day now. What? And, yeah. But definitely see the horror movie Mother's Day, <laughs> yeah, not the yes. other Mother's Day. They should have a movie, The Other Mother's uh, Day. The horror movie is awesome. Yeah. I've Both lost control of that ship. Uh, okay, because Mutiny. We're, no, we're running. Now we're out of time. We're oh out of time, God. guys. We can't what? do any more Twitter questions. No, we got oh. time. No, we got don't. It. We've hit an hour. <laughs> that's it. Okay. Time oh flies God. when you're having fun. So we'll save them for next week. Uh, that's going to do it for us today. Let's go ahead and thank our panel. Perry, where can they oh, find I'm you? I'm caught off guard. I wasn't ready for that. Sorry, <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> Until next week, uh, you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at P. Nemiroff. On Collider Nightmares next Wednesday morning, hopefully answering the Twitter questions we missed. Uh, best of the week every Saturday, Mailbag Saturday. We got one more episode of After Ash Left. There's also the Walking Dead recap show as well, so check those out. Jeez. Okay, Schnepp? All right, you find me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp, on Heroes, which dropped yesterday, and on Collider Movie Talk, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And definitely pre-order my Slayer comic. It comes out January 24th, Woo-hoo. Dark Horse. Woo-hoo. Check it out. Awesome. And a big thank you to our friend Jimmy O. Yay. Thank you yes. for being here. Thank you. Yeah, you can find me on Joe Blow and Arrow on the Head. Wonderful. There you go. There awesome. You go. And you can find me at Clark Wolf, Clark with an E, Wolf with an E. And you can also find me and the Collider Nightmares panel at the Exorcist screening uh, this Friday at Fox. So once again, if you want to RSVP, the email address is tcftv.events at fox.com. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you in your nightmares. <laughs> hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.